the land of the long white cloud has always been a great neighbour of Australia and yes, I refer to New Zealand. And what a wonderful country it is and joining us is a man from that area, Mr Lyndon Kapoor. How are you Lyndon? Very good, thank you. And yep. welcome to Geelong. Thank you. You've yep, been enjoying it here. Enjoying it. Now, uh, we have uh, here at the 2009 Avalon International Air Show uh, the, uh, a visit from the New Zealand people, and your exhibit covers exactly what? Uh, the manufacture of precision components for the aircraft industry. Um, we specialise in machining aluminium, titaniums, uh, heat treated steels. Um, we machine in the hardened state and the soft state. We offer heat treatment services. Um, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, our quality of, of the products that we manufacture is endorsed via our um, 17025 accredited laboratory, which makes us quite unique in, the, in this, um, this field. Not many manufacturers have an accredited laboratory on site. Um, that gives us the ability to confirm to our customers that uh, the components we manufacture uh, conform to their quality requirements and drawing specifications. Well, Linda, while Matt, the cameraman's hard at work, uh, you might like to uh, run our viewers through uh, and explain some of these engineering components, please. Sure. These are um, uh, a, a petrol um, cap and fitting for the aircraft wing on, a, on an Alpha plane. Um, we manufacture these for, for Alpha. Um, cheaper than you can get them off the shelf. Uh, this here is a, a, a linkage for the uh, cables that operate the flaps. It's machined on a five-axis machine, um, quite a complex component, and that's this component is as it comes off the machine tool. There's no handwork on this at all. Um, a very, very precision machining work. Precision machining work. Um, the aircraft uh, component tolerances are around about ten thousandths of an inch, uh, 0.25 millimeters. When we come to the steel components, um, we're getting down to tolerances of uh, ten microns. So this item's got many components, um, and they all stack together to give us a, a tolerance over the length from the base to the tip of 10 microns, plus or minus. And what, point, what part of the plane do we find that one on? This, this component here actually belongs to the uh, plastics industry. Right. Um, and it injects plastic into the, the moulding tools okay. that, that may be used to manufacture plastic components on the aircraft. Um, what else do we have? These... Uh, larger panels are used in the aircraft frame. Um, they're also used in the wings. They're machined on three axis CNC machining centres um, and that's as it comes off the off the machining centre as well. No hand work on it at all um, and we do um, spars up to nine metres in length. And, and the type of metal you implemented is, uh, is aluminium? This is aluminium. It's an aluminium alloy. Um, you got a bit of titanium down there? We don't have any titanium parts, but we do machine titanium. Well, I, can, uh, I can tell you, Rollo's got, Rollo's got a couple of bits of titanium in, uh, in both knees. And, uh, oh, has he? <laughs> and, we... and, and in one hip and about another one to go in. Oh. Well, so uh, they well might then. be made in New Zealand. They could be. We, we manufacture a lot of that stuff down in the South Island. How big is aviation in New Zealand? It's uh, small, but it's actually a very growing, uh, booming industry to be in at the moment. Um, we're manufacturing uh, a huge number of planes, more than we have done for the, probably the past 15, 20 years. Um, Pacific, Avia, uh, Pacific Aerospace in, in Hamilton are knocking out, um, I think, around four aircraft a month, which is a record number at the moment. And, and uh, I mean, from a, a tourism viewpoint, having visited uh, the pleasure of visiting New Zealand, yes. um, the use of uh, the smaller planes, uh, the uh, snow planes landing the, um, on yep. the glaciers, the helicopters, yes. I mean, uh, they are fantastic ways they of are. being yep. able to uh, view a great, great country. It is. It's a great way to view the country. And um, probably per head of population, we've got a, we're up there with the, you know, probably top five countries in the world for, for aircraft per head of population, small aircraft. So now, uh, uh, before I go, I mean, the, the interviewers, uh, what are you having for tea tonight? Uh, probably going to find yourself a good curry house. A curry house? You're, <laughs> you're not going out for fush and chops? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not today. A man of humour. Yep. A man, uh, how are you enjoying yourself at the show? Absolutely loving it, thanks. Uh, met some fantastic Australians. And, um, yeah, having a great time in Melbourne. That's where we are uh, camped out. Uh, the Mantra South Bank. So, yeah, it's just a wonderful experience.
Well, enjoy your stay at the north northern suburb of uh, Geelong, we call Melbourne, because uh, Geelong <laughs> we regard as the capital of Victoria. That's capital. Fair enough. I Thank agree. you very much to, uh, to Lyndon for joining us here on News Geelong as part of our coverage of the 2009 Avalon International Air Show. It is a buzz. Well, viewers, it probably looks like a water bottle with a black spider on the front. But I can assure you, it's not. And to tell us all about what it is, we welcome Robert Bruss. How are you, Rob? Really well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Now, what is this uh, beautiful piece of what looks to be a simple black water bottle, but you've got another name for it. Yeah, this is known as Spider Tracks. It's uh, the world's favourite portable aircraft tracking solution. Uh, it's a little uh, little box with a GPS uh, transceiver in the top of it. You pop it up on the glare shield of your aircraft and it will report the aircraft's position, heading altitude and airspeed back to a website just as this. Uh, so it allows people to track their assets in real time and they can see exactly where they've been and, and what they've been up to. So that, that's actually installed in the, uh, the cockpit of the plane? Uh, absolutely, it's, uh, it just sits up on the glare shield. Uh, it's not installed as such. You can you just plug it in. It's a it's a portable device, so you don't need one for every single one of your aircraft. If your aircraft are not all flying at once, for instance, uh, and it's portable and it's interchangeable in between your machines. Who's the brainchild child behind Spider Tracks? Uh, the guy who created his name is Don Sandbrook. He's uh, he's in New Zealand, and hence us being on the New Zealand stand here today. And I'm the Aussie rep for for spider tracks and uh, that's the reason for me being at Avalon. And how popular are we finding this uh, in the aviation industry because it, uh, it, it's becoming a very vital part of, of our whole travel life, isn't it? Absolutely it is. It's, uh, it, it's very client driven these days more than operator driven. The clients are aware of tracking systems and what's out there and they require their operators to actually have them. Uh, we're making huge headway here in the Australian market and one of the biggest advantages of spider tracks over the other systems out there is that it's actually portable and there's no installation required you don't need to drill holes in your roof to fit an external antenna or anything like that. Simply pop it up on your glare shield, plug it in, you've got your tracking. So if you were moving uh, from a, a 172 to a 210 uh, plane to plane, you can take this with you, what, uh, whatever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. You, all you need is the right power source, uh, and then you can take it in between any aircraft. I've had it in aircraft from uh, little R22s to AS350 Squirrels and all the way up to a Hawker 800. Uh, so it works in anything with a power supply. Rob, how did you get involved in the aviation industry? No, I'm actually a pilot myself. You're actually a pilot yeah, yourself. A what, pilot myself. what level do you fly to? Uh, PPL. Right. So PPL level. I've got a CPL, but I really yeah, only ever do PPL let, let's, let's get this right for the viewers because we're not as all aviated uh, knowledge as what you guys are. What does that mean? Well, I hold a commercial pilot's licence, but I'm really only flying to a private level. So when somebody asks me what sort of pilot I am, I'm just a weekend warrior. But uh, you've got a love for that, uh, that air up there. It's just a magnificent feeling, isn't it? Absolutely. That's why I love working in the aviation industry. It's all, uh, it's all good fun. And wherever you go... Spider tracks or no? Spider tracks with you. You betcha. <laughs> spider tracks. That's what it is. The one system that the New Zealand people are very proud of and marketing here in Australia. Adaptable, versatile and safety first. Remember what we heard from CASA? That is a very important part of flying and aviation here at the Avalon International Air Show at our great city of Geelong, Avalon Airport, just outside the wonderful town. Thanks very much, Rob. You're very welcome. Thank you. Well, that's another wrap for week two of our coverage of the Avalon International Air Show for 2009, just outside our city of greater goodness. Yes, that's spelled G-O-E-L-O-N-G, -E Geelong, and we're very proud of it. It's a great occasion. There's thousands of people thronging into the Avalon airfield for what is a, another great success for the Avalon International Air Show. And would you believe they're already starting to plan 2011. So that's how advanced they are, and more particularly, how they recognise that Geelong is a centre for an international air show and has the facilities out here at Avalon to provide it. Hope you're enjoying the program. Stay with us for next week. Another c further coverage coming up of the Avalon International Air Show for 2009. Until then, Rollo saying bye for now.